So, following the unusual occurrence recently at one St. Andrew High School, after a religious exercise, the question is again being raised about devotion in schools and the protocols surrounding this practice. We've invited pastor of the Filippo Baptist Church, Reverend Carl Johnson, to join in this discussion with us this morning. Good morning, Reverend. Thank you for joining us. Morning, sir. Morning, morning, morning. First Come on, of, Good to have you. Um, first of all, your thoughts around what happened at Oberlin initially. Um, another school, it was reported, had a similar um, situation. I don't know if it was a day after or days after. I don't know if you read about that mm -hmm. name. Um, but first, I mean, a lot of folks don't understand. Many don't claim to. Many are saying, be careful what you say um, because, you know, we can't explain it. What are your thoughts around what happened, Rev? Well, well I think in this age we live in now that um, the, the media platforms carry things quicker, faster, and, and sometimes a little more sensational, it, it is hard to get a firm, good, satisfying grasp quickly at what might have happened. Certainly on my part, uh, my history would suggest that some of the things that appear to have happened were not terribly unusual, albeit you wouldn't expect it on a normal basis in a school devotion setting. But in terms of being in a religious environment, a spiritual environment, a worship environment, and having young people or anybody there, um, manifestations and expressions as we have witnessed and seen are not terribly unheard of. So it, it didn't strike me initially um, as something um, to, to, to be overly concerned about. As it unfolded and more perspectives started to come in, I, 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 I felt that perhaps we really needed to have a conversation again at, at different levels as to what exactly an assembly, a chapter session, having devotions within an educational environment at that level um, really is for and about. Yeah, you know, I was going to ask you that. I'm, um, I'm told we have so many churches in the country. Um, most of us go to church almost every single Sunday or Saturday, depending on, 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 on how you um, do your thing. Why do we need devotions at schools? Do we need devotions at schools? Well, I would, I would, I would put it another way. I would say whatever assists in developing wholesome persons, building formation, strengthening character, and exposing persons within their own religious, social, cultural framework is necessary. Is necessary, you said? Necessary. I said necessary. I want to jump well, in. Simone made a point this morning about the fact that I went to a Catholic school. Were so, I, so did I. Yeah, were I not a Catholic, um, would it hurt me as a religious person to hear what the Catholics are saying and maybe I am Seventh-day Adventist or, or, or that would matter? Well, I went, I went to a Catholic school, the one you went to. <laughs> and, and, and my exposure and experience benefited um, from that framework. And, uh, and I think one, the school I'm associated with mainly now um, is owned by a denomination and we have regular chapel assembly sessions and we try to use those opportunities to do a number of things, to include communicating and, and essaying views which we hope will strengthen the character of these young men. And, and, and I think I, we, I don't think, you know, friends, that there can be any doubt or debate that Jamaica, in particular at this stage of our lives, need to recultivate a certain intentionality towards building values, those intangibles, 
which are sadly lacking in increasing ways. I mean, I just heard former prime ministers recently lamenting that a program that ought to have meant good for the country was sidelined um, only because some would argue narrow parochial partisan politics. But Jamaica is suffering for it. Yep. So I want to ask you, Rev, I want to go back to something you said earlier, which caught my ear and I want you to expand. So you're saying we need to have a conversation around assembly and what that ought to look like because I think some are okay with an assembly or, an, or, or a devotion, um, maybe others not so much with church, which is what seemed to have happened at the school last week. I don't know, that's just my um, analysis. I, I think there's a distinction. Um, Tell me what your thoughts are, because apparently what happened at the session is that there was a teacher who said she had a word to deliver to the students. She was given the opportunity and then whatever happened after happened. Um, how do you see these assemblies unfolding and what are they to look like and what are the parameters to be when, when these exercises are being conducted? Well, I think what you're asking is whether we would do well to have guidelines to have um, guidelines. guidelines guidelines right guidelines um, which which are different from protocols and i hear the word maybe we need those too no but i'm saying i am not for protocols okay i am both for guidelines be, be, because i believe we we should repose in our education educators the the, the the competence to know the difference and how to sensitively, responsibly, and maturely create a framework which, if it, if it is couched <coughs> in certain church, denominational, religious expression, it is not there to proselytize, therefore to convert the youngster. Mm -hmm. It is there, to, I go back to my term, for character formation. So, so hold on, stick up in now, Rev. This is a very crucial point you're making. So guidelines versus protocols, you clearly know the difference. Tell us what the difference is between a guideline and a protocol, and then tell us the guidelines as you see them moving as a way forward. Okay. So a protocol would be a TVJ. When you come in, um, only Carl Johnson or Neville Bell or Spoon that can come in. When they come in, they must be wearing that suit or clothes. Um, next thing, they sit in that chair. Thirdly, they wash. Them. So there are certain specific steps. A guideline would say, um, ensure that whoever enters the building properly attired. Gotcha. Things like that. So Except it's, it's properly wider... attired leaves room for discussion based on what you consider Precisely. properly attired to be. Precisely. So <laughs> a protocol is more rigid. So that's why I made a point that we need to remind ourselves what role devotions, assemblies, chapel sessions ought to play. Gotcha. I want to jump in. I want to jump in. I want to jump in again, Reverend, because we are almost out of time, and I want to yes. change lanes just a bit. Going back to, yes. we went to Catholic schools. You have um, Baptist schools. You have Seventh Day Adventist schools. Should the ministry slash minister get involved in all of this and telling the schools, well, be careful what you're doing and do it this way. Should, should that the ministry or the minister be setting the guidelines and the post? Right. Well, I think the ministry as a, as a very active and senior partner in the, in the education process ought to have a say at the table. But I don't think that um, any partner, any stakeholder, should should in this matter and many other matters develop a posture of of lay down edicts i think there should be a conversation and putting your own suggestions around the table and allowing the guidelines to guide the action allowing the principles to speak to the practice what if the principal 
whether male or female, don't believe in a supreme being and don't believe you should have this guideline on church at school and say, I don't want it. You would have an issue with that? Yes, I think, well, I think if the school that the principal is overseeing has a conversation with all the stakeholders, staff, students, and they de decide that this is not something they want, I think I have to respect that. Okay. I would personally would, wouldn't, wouldn't agree, but we have to respect that. Yeah. Is this too much about nothing, or is this something that we really should be talking about until we get this right? I think we should continue talk, talking about it. Anything that impacts our, mm -hmm. especially our youngsters, mm -hmm. ought mm -hmm. always to have audience, mm -hmm. a place and, for ventilation and, and think, improving. I think an important question you asked, even as we wrap, is, um, is about, you know, a head who does not believe. But the truth is that if what Rev is saying is that Assemblies and devotions are to be about, ought to be about character building. There are folks who perhaps do not believe, who are still of good integrity, yeah. who can impart, um, you know, notions and nuggets of integrity to the, yeah. to the students and build character. So yeah. this debate is going to go on, as Rev said, forever yeah. because it is just that important. <laughs> Thanks, Reverend Carl. Um, yes, great insight. Thank you very much, Rev. Appreciate it. God bless you, sir, and your family. Bless you. Go. All right, Pastor of Philippa Baptist Church, Reverend Carl Johnson. After the break, the Nomadic School Tour shares a joy, and, joy magic. and magic of poetry. Where's Philippa Baptist?